There was a time, really not that long ago, where app image was incredibly convenient and really simple to use. All you would do is download the app image, maybe rename it to make it a bit easier to find, you would make it executable, and then in your file manager, double click it, or from a terminal, you would just run the file. And then on pretty much any Linux system, it would just load the application. That time is kinda long past now. For quite a while, app image has basically been on life support. And a major reason for this is more and more distros choosing not to ship one of its dependencies, completely destroying the selling point over other systems. The idea of an app image is you download it and it runs, no questions asked. And it's very unclear from the app image website that there's even anything you need to install. Leading Linux distributions, download an application, make it executable and run. No need to install, no system libraries or preferences are altered. Can also run in a sandbox like FireJail and lists out all of these different distros here. This one shouldn't even be on the list anymore. Distribute your desktop Linux application in the app image format and win users running all common Linux distributions. Package once and run everywhere. Reach users on all major desktop distributions. And it doesn't even mention the dependency in the quick start guide. Literally all it says is you can run it. Or from the terminal, you can run it. <laughs> the only mention of the dependency, at least the only one that I can find, is in the troubleshooting guide. So it's like, hey, I get some errors related to something called Fuse. That is because your distro is missing libfuse2. This project had its last release all the way back on January 5th, 2019. But that doesn't mean that libfuse itself is over. There's a libfuse2, so there's probably a libfuse1 and a libfuse3. This is a maintenance release from the 2.9 branch of libfuse. Users are encouraged to transition to the actively developed lib3.x, with its latest release being three weeks ago, libfuse 3.14.0. Now, unlike some projects that are done, like dmenu, like st, things like that, where they don't need to be updated, Libfuse 2 is not like that. Libfuse 2 has known security vulnerabilities, it has known bugs, and if you're going to be using Libfuse, you should be updating to the 3.x branch. And since the last update of 2.x was three years ago, distros like Ubuntu stopped shipping it in 22.04, and a lot of other distros out there basically just do what Ubuntu does. Now, in most cases, it is still going to be available in your repos. It's just not going to be installed out of the box. With the continuing rise of Flatpak, app image is basically just going to waste and nobody is going to make an app image if it doesn't really have any benefit over the other solutions anymore. But finally, the app image developer accepts that there is a real problem, not just the problem with libfuse2, also the alpine problem. Use libfuse3. But before that, quick explanation on what libfuse actually is. Libfuse, it is a library for fuse. Fuse stands for file system in user space. And this does basically what it says on the tin. Typically file system operations require you to be a privileged user, typically the root user. You don't wanna just have a regular user, you know, making petitions, deleting the boot petition. So leaving this to the privileged user, you know, makes perfect sense. But there are cases where you wanna have a non-privileged user be able to you know, mount a drive, for example. Let's say they plug in a USB thumb drive. Let's say they have like a phone, for example, and they want to access its contents. These are perfectly reasonable cases. So what Fuse lets you do is run that file system code in user space as a non-privileged user, and then acts as a bridge to the kernel functions and all the things that need to go on in the background to make a file system work. 
It is by no means the quickest or most efficient way to handle file systems, but for things like this, it is perfectly functional. An app image relies on this functionality. But let's get over to the, I guess it's GitHub, so a pull request. We are not interested in updating the major version of the statically linked libfuse all the time. However, it has been said that Upstream does not provide security fixes for libfuse 2 anymore. Is there a link to this? This was posted three days ago, by the way. So in the past three years, he has not looked at the libfuse repo to see that has not been updated. Literally look at the repo and you will see that. None of these CVEs that exist, granted there's not that many here, are ever going to be addressed. Hence, we should use libfuse in the hope that the fuse project will stay with that major version indefinitely. Which is not was not and never will be the goal of the libfuse project. At some point, there will be a libfuse 4. At some point, there will be a libfuse 5. They're not going to stay on libfuse 3. That's just not how this works. But there is a reason why he doesn't want to try and keep it updated with whatever's going on. Are there any compatibility guarantees with regard to fuse amount, fuse amount 3, fuse amount n, you know, whatever version comes in the future? App images currently rely on the fuse amount binary being there. Some distributions are now shipping fuse amount 3 by default. One day, they might ship fuse amount 4, fuse amount n. It would be very valuable to know for sure that versions of fuse amount will continue to be compatible to earlier ones, so that things like GoFuse could be made to work not just for fuse amount and fuse amount 3, but also for future versions. There are no compatibility guarantees. However, multiple major versions of libfuse are intended to be co-installable, and the right version of fuse amount should be pulled in automatically through the dependency on the right libfuse shared library. This is true. The problem is that a lot of distros just don't ship the version that AppImage is using because that version is dead. Now to work out how we got here, let's go back to when Ubuntu basically killed AppImage. When this happened, the dev realized that something had to be done, otherwise there's no reason to even use an app image. From here, he had a couple of different considerations. One of them was actually removing the need for fuse amount. The fuse amount command might change in the future. Currently, some distributions are shipping fuse amount, while others are shipping fuse amount 3. And at some point in the future, they might ship other versions. Upstream seems to make no compatibility guarantees regarding future versions of Fuse Amount, so we need to find a way to get rid of Fuse Amount altogether. And he had a tool that was doing it. The problem is it required root permissions. And he even considered patching libfuse2. Having more than one libfuse doubles the maintenance burden and size, so it is not something we should do. Instead, we should patch libfuse so that it tries in this order. Fuse amount, fuse amount 2, fuse amount 3, so on and so forth until the end of time. That patch would never be accepted because libfuse 2 is a dead project. And then eventually, this all circled back to a completely separate issue from 2018. If you're an Alpine Linux user, you probably noticed that app images have never worked because app images are dynamically linked against glibc. Alpine Linux being a non-GNU system does not have glibc, so app images don't work. The plan here is to statically link them instead, but this plan also helps with libfuse as well. If libfuse is statically linked, assuming that it still works with the current kernel, an app image should theoretically work on any distribution whatsoever. Here's the problem though. Initially, when he was planning to do the static linking, he was going to statically link against libfuse2. This, once again, was being discussed this year. There was no reason why in 2023, you would statically link against libfuse2. So then he decided, wait, maybe we should statically link against libfuse3 instead. Yes, correct. This is where we should have been from the start. 
And there is an experimental build tool for doing this static linking, but it's experimental, so it's going to take a while for things to, you know, get ready to be used by everyone. So here's my prediction. App image is going to have the ability to be statically linked against libfuse3, and then three, four, five years from now, the exact same thing is going to happen. Libfuse 3 is no longer going to be updated. You're supposed to move to Libfuse 4 and app image is not going to do so. And then the developer is going to say, hmm, are there any links to show that Libfuse 3 is no longer being updated? I haven't looked at the repo in three years. I have no idea. And you know what? The same thing will probably happen once again. App Image is a really weird project. It sort of frames itself as this really useful tool that would be great for everybody to use, but it's kind of maintained as if it's a personal project for the developer. And there's nothing wrong with either of these things happening. The problem is when they happen at the same time. Pick one or the other, and it will give people a better understanding of whether they should or shouldn't use App Image. But let me know your thoughts. Do you think they should do the static linking? Do you think it's not really that big of a deal? You have to just install a package and they work? I would love to know. And if you liked the video, go and like the video. And if you really like the video and you want to become one of these amazing people over here, check out my Patreon, Scribe, Sully, Bearer, Pay, linked in the description down below. That's going to be it for me. And use Flatpak.